it may seem incredible that in 2017, many women need to be encouraged to take a role in the financial side of their lives. But uh, we have a survey that says we need to, according to Meridian's Dillis DeCruz, who joins us this evening. Dillis, welcome to what she said. Thanks so much. Always great to be here. So what do recent surveys tell us about what women know and why they need to become proactive? Some interesting studies that have come out uh, recently. So a recent Stats Canada survey uh, really surveyed the knowledge of um, financial knowledge of women versus men. And there is still a gender gap when it comes to women's financial knowledge versus men. It was about 13% difference in knowledge. Um, Interestingly enough, in this survey, that even university-educated women were coming in scoring lower against university-educated men. And so um, there is definitely an issue and a gap that still exists in terms of women's knowledge. And then couple that with the fact that once you couple up and get married, it goes down even more. For anyone who's largely stayed out of the finances in their family, it can be a really daunting prospect, Mm -hmm. I think, because money is not something that our generation is comfortable with. We don't like to talk about it. We don't like to get, many people don't want to get involved in it. Where should these women start? Yeah, and and, you know, it's really interesting because, um, you know, why is it that once you couple up, Uh, all of a sudden literacy or financial literacy is going down. And so I think people just, you know, in a household, someone normally takes the lead and quite often, whether you're educated or not educated, um, it might be the male. And so you just, I think, get a little complacent and someone else is doing it. And I think that's okay. It's okay if one person takes the lead, but I think it's really important for women to ask questions and, uh, you know, sit down and, and really kind of say, where are we financially? And so I I would say the first thing you want to do is uh, get informed and get involved and and really sit down and say, you know, what is our financial situation? Um, What is our cash flow? What is our debt? What are our investments? Um, Really important to know. Insurance. Insurance. Absolutely. You know, and some basic things. Where are our documents? I mean, God Mm -hmm. forbid, um, you know, something happens and and, uh, your spouse goes into the hospital or suddenly passes away. Um, You know, do you know where your documents are and the the critical information? Do you know who your advisors are? And so I think it's really important just to sit down and start having that conversation. And it doesn't have to be a big conversation. Show me everything right now. But, you know, really just baby steps to say, where are we financially? and what is our situation. And really also make sure uh, that you are joint on certain accounts that are, uh, you know, that are important. Um, and an example of this is, uh, you know, I had some relatives a few years ago, um, you know, in their in mid, mid 80s, and uh, they'd been married for about 50, well, 55 years. And uh, at least um, the wife in the situation did have her own account, which was really great. They, they managed their finances somewhat separately. But what happened is the husband started uh, suffering from dementia. Mm-hmm. And then he had an accident and he went in the hospital and he was incapacitated completely. What she found was their day-to-day account where they paid all the bills, she wasn't joint on. And we had actually spoken to this relative of ours beforehand and said, make her joint. He's like, yeah, I don't want to do that. Or he had whatever reasons. But then what happened was she couldn't make the day-to-day payments from that account because she wasn't joint on the account. Yeah, the other thing too is power of attorneys. My parents, long before they were ill, um, gave me power of attorney and they said, you may not need it, but if anything Mm -hmm. happens, you have it. And it was was tucked away. And then when my dad got sick and then my mother was was not well at all because she'd she'd never even written a check. She she didn't know what a GIC was. She didn't even know if they had insurance. She knew nothing. She was exactly the the that person that you're talking about. And if I hadn't had that, um, I don't know what would have happened. I think that is so important that you bring that up, Christine, is, is that have those conversations early, you know, get those powers of attorney set up at minimum. And you get that that way, at least you can jump in should something happen. And, you know, be joint where, where necessary as well, too. And another study just to, to kind of, um, you know, layer this on top is, is that um, 45% of women over 65 are widowed. So a study in the US said that Nine out of 10 women at some point in the time uh, in their lifetime will have to manage their finances by themselves. And so 
it's critical if if nine out of ten women are going to have to manage their finances at some point in time because we're either outliving, uh, or you know, marriages are fifty percent of marriages are ending in divorce. It's critical that women start getting informed now and and start really getting educated. So um, going back to getting you know, if you're with a partner now, really just take some interest, start asking questions, and really start understanding what your financial situation is. So should anything happen, you know, you're not overwhelmed. Um, the next thing I think that is really important. I talked a little bit about this in, in, in these relatives of ours, is, is that have a savings account. I think it's really important to, for women to have, if, if you're in a relationship, have a savings account or your own separate account. An emergency account. An emergency account, right? So it's building independence. It's it's there if you need it. Um, and, you know, I, I have an interesting story about one of our members who, um, she was a stay-at-home mom for a few years. She's a freelance writer. And she, you know, went in and... Uh, she said every time I went into the bank, she wasn't with us at this point in time, the advisor would always speak to her husband. And she really felt left out of the conversation. She didn't have the knowledge. And one day she saw our, our branch and she went by and decided to have a conversation. And the advisor took personal interest in her and started asking her questions. And he basically um, started saying, you know, set up an account. And so from that, she set up a savings account. She learned more about RSPs. And then she took an active interest in the financial affairs. And uh, the, the story then goes on that she uh, now, has, she convinced her husband to move their banking. But she is now... <laughs> <laughs> which is awesome for us, but uh, but she's now running. She's taking active uh, involvement in their household finances. But it was all about the confidence. She didn't have the confidence of her knowledge, and so um, that leads me to the next point: is really educate yourself. Yeah, really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I was going to say that uh, when I did my will, I decided I wrote a list for my children on the back of it of where everything was, what I had, who to contact, and a phone number. And that might be a good start. Yeah, I, I think that there's so many ways to do it. You don't want it to be overwhelming. Um, you know, just kind of get the basics there. That's a fantastic way of doing it. And educating yourself, too, is, you know, we are always offering uh, financial literacy, uh, free seminars on right. RSPs and mortgages. Um, so there are tons of ways to get information, whether you're reading, whether you're going to free seminars, um, and even just going into your advisor. In this case of this member who went in, she didn't even know what questions to ask. And she started small, and then all of a sudden she's gained this confidence, and she started, she's opened up this account. So could they go to Meridian? Could people just make an appointment with somebody at Meridian and say, look, I, I want to become more educated. Um, I'd like to open an account. Can you help me? Yeah, I, and I think that's a great start. I think that's a great start. Just go in there, have a conversation, and just be open and honest and, and say, you know what? I'm really not familiar, and don't use all these terms with me because I really don't understand all the acronyms, whether it's a TFSA or RSP. And just say, you know, help me. Here's my financial situation. Or, you know what, I'm stay at home and I really don't know, but I want some independence. They can help you and look at your whole financial situation and give you advice. And I think knowing, as you said, uh, uh, you know, if you're not on the joint account, for the basic account where most of your cash flow, you know, you're paying your, your household bills comes from, you should at least have, you know, a debit card and have an access to the card so you can continue to pay the bills. That's exactly it because you could be paralyzed, right? Mm -hmm. You can just be paralyzed. And then what do you have to do? You have to go to a lawyer, especially let's say in a case where your spouse is incapacitated or, or passed away suddenly. But now all of a sudden you have to incur expenses um, to prove that you should be able to go onto that account and, and make those payments. So I think that's a critical thing. Just be prepared so that um, you're not overwhelmed because a situation could hit you and it's overwhelming enough by itself. Mm-hmm. So gaining financial confidence, don't be off, don't be caught off guard, basically, is what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, and go out there and just get informed, you know, get informed, take control and uh, gain that confidence and, and uh, just prepare for the future so that if it happens, if life takes a turn, uh, you're not feeling uh, that you're totally out of control. And certainly something to pass on to daughters. Yes, start young. Start mm -hmm. young with daughters. And, uh, you know, we have that Save the Camp app we had talked about once before. You know, start young with, with daughters, start young with kids, and, and get them really, get their literacy up in, in the whole financial space. All right, Dillis, thank you so much for joining us. To, uh, tell people where they can connect with you and get some more of this invaluable help and advice. Yeah, go on to our website, www.meridiancu.ca, and you can find a branch nearest you and pop in and see an advisor. Thank you so much. Great, thank you. This is what she said. Stay with us.